from I Went on Kai. On today's podcast episode, I am so excited for all of you to join me. In this episode, I have a very special guest, Kat Sands from Kat Sands Productions. She is an event designer that has been in the industry for about three years. And through her time in the industry, she has made such a splash doing everything from corporate to social events. She will be sharing the seven things that she wished she knew before she started her business. Kat, Hello. welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. Of course. So all of you know, <laughs> she's had a morning to get here. I did. Yeah. She is the epitome of persistence and dedication. <laughs> yeah. And basically, this morning, you want to share a little bit, a yes. quick synopsis? A quick synopsis. I got into a really, not bad car accident because I'm fine. <laughs> But I got into a pretty big car accident, and then my car is like half falling apart. But I drove down here because I didn't want to cancel. <laughs> that is dedication, everyone. She's dedicated to bringing you all all the tea and inspiring each and every one of you, especially because she has so much to say with starting her own design business, and she has so much experience and she has such an eye for detail. So I'm so excited to get started. So tell everyone a little bit about yourself, Cap. Sure. So I first met Lucy actually um, when I was starting at AI, an art institute, and you were one of my professors. And I started in fashion, and from fashion I went into marketing, and from marketing I went to advertising. So I did a couple of steps before starting my own company and even deciding to do events. Um, but I always like knew that I like like design. I always like when I first interned at Swim Week, I like loved it. I'm like I want to do something like that. So from there, I decided to start my own company. We started really small. Thankfully, we've grown, you know, into like a bigger company now. But that's a little bit of our backstory. And now with your company, you focus on doing corporate events, mm -hmm. social events, and you focus a lot within the production aspect mm -hmm. because you all will see her work a little later on through the episode, but she's so detailed to branding. And I love it because you could tell you have a fashion background. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> fashion. I, I feel like that's what made me even realize that I wanted to do something with events. I was like, I like feel like I have good design. I have like good taste with things or so I've been told. Um, but I started, you know, with events and, you know, it grew from there. So you did mention that you were working in marketing before. Yeah. So I guess take us through the steps of like, you're in the marketing company working and yeah. then you move on to opening your event business. Like, what was that moment they were just like, I'm done with this like nine to five. I'm ready to like put my hustle in and start my business. Like, what was that moment? Right. So I was working Zimmerman at Zimmerman Advertising, which if anybody knows, like on your signatures, is 24-7, available 24-7. Oh my God, that's crazy. Um, yeah. But I mean, I loved it. I love the speed. I loved my clients. I loved my boss. Like, zero complaints. But... Um, I was also doing network marketing, uh, Monet, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. Um, I used to harass you to do it, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I harassed everybody, um, but I realized that I was working so many hours, you're your hustle, yeah, right? I was like hustling, I would like finish working at like 7 with Zimmerman, and then I would work like until like 11 with this other company, and I realized that like I'm a really hard worker, and I'm like, I feel like I could do something on my own. Um, I obviously didn't have like a big capital to start like a huge business or anything. So I was like, I'm going to do like these little picnics on the beach, like very like $5,000 in total to start my business. Yeah. And from there, I was just like growing it and growing it. But the moment that I realized is when I like caught myself like working like Monday through Sunday, but it was not necessarily for myself that I was like, I feel like if I had the same energy for something that I did, I would be successful. That's amazing. Yeah. So it was like that moment where you were working for the company and then you're just like, I'm putting so much time yeah. and effort into a, a company that's not mine. Yeah. But I could, if I put this out, like the amount of hours into my yeah. company, how much could it grow, right? Yes. So then how did you find the name? Like, how did you know, like, where to start? Because I know you said picnics, but then yeah. from there, like, how did you know, like, what vendors to get, yeah. like, who to contact, right? Right. So first I started off as, which is really important that I will say, like, think about your name and don't limit yourself because... I started obviously as a picnic company, which was like very boho, like the Instagrammable moments for like the influencers. I love it though, you were doing yeah. Instagram. Yeah, I would, so I named it the boho experience. And as I started growing, people were like, I don't just, they would always, always tell me like, I just don't want a boho event. Like I want like something else. And I'm like, no, but I do do more than that. So then I rebranded it because I started looking at like all my favorite event planner, planners like Mindy Weiss, um, and it was a lot of their own names. So that's how I switched it to Cat Science Productions. 
Um, but I mean, I didn't know what right vendors to do. I, everything was like, I didn't know. I didn't know anybody that had an event company. I didn't have a mentor that knew how to do an event company. It was basically like me cutting flowers in my like living room that I live in a one, one bedroom. Um, and then I started cutting flowers on the beach. Um, and then from there I was just like researching and as time would come, I would like, you know, get more and more vendors. But in the beginning I was like, how do people even do these backdrops? Like the backdrops that you guys have here with the Barbie. Yeah. I'm like, how do they cut that? Like, where do they do that? You yeah. know? And I didn't know, but with some time I started like finding, you know, as you start getting more involved, you need more people, but I had zero, like 0, 0.0 idea, zero. So to, I guess to our viewers and listeners, yeah. what is the main thing that like, you were very fierce and bold to do that because, yeah. it, I mean, what was going through your mind as you're starting your business? You're like, oh my God, this is something new. Like, were you scared? What were the emotions and how did you push yourself through all that? Yeah. Um, I think I was just really excited. I was just like everything that would happen. I'm like, oh my, I did a lot of free events in the beginning. I did a lot of collabs like to get my name out there. Um, I worked for free, like in the hot sun. Like if you know Miami, like it's so hot and I, everyone <laughs> wanted a beach pic picnic at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So I was like, carrying these picnic tables like everybody that knew me knew that I had like a good job I had a good like I wasn't like you know struggling yeah. you know and so they saw me like doing all these things and they were like but why why yeah. is she like putting the hustle in to yeah. not like be having her own company because yeah that takes a lot of work and dedication yeah. yeah the hours like you said like you're putting yeah. all the hours for another company but yeah you are doing it for you but like in those moments that you were just like why am I doing this? So people would question you, which mm -hmm. is a great thing, which I think a lot of people resonate with yeah. is like, there's those people that are like, you're starting your business. You're crazy. You have a good yeah. job. Nine to five yeah. benefits package 401k. Yeah. But it's not about that for the creative, no. right? You need more. No. Like, yeah, you need more. I feel like you just need, like I needed, I, I wanted to feel something that was mine, but I think I kind of got away from that feeling when I first started doing network marketing which was Monet, like yeah. everybody made fun of me. Like everybody was like, why are you doing that? Like all the things that come with doing something like a herbal life or Monet. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of, was, I was like, okay, you know, I can do this if everybody just like, you know, made fun of me on social media. That so I did it was like you putting yourself out there? Yeah, I put myself out there once so I'm like, I can do it again. But I think one of the things that really kept me going, which is going to sound really cheesy, is my mom. Like, she, we came here as immigrants. This is not yeah. cheesy. So yeah. share it. Share yeah. it. Because moms really are yeah. a motivational aspect. Yeah. So we came here as immigrants. My mom had a lot of things in South America where we're from. And she left everything. We came here with $500. She didn't know English. She worked as a waitress. And she worked as a clown. She worked as like all these different things, like never compromising her morals. And then she was able to start her own business later on in life, speak so many languages. But not whenever you see my mom, you think of her like a classy, like this nice, lady. super refined, yeah, super refined. Yeah. Um, but it was nothing like I saw her hustle so much, and I realized like if she could hustle and she did it with a daughter when she was like twenty four, like I could do it too. That's amazing. So yeah, so that was kind of like. Yeah, I'm gonna like start crying. I don't want. <laughs> But yeah. oh my god, that's amazing! Yeah, she like, kept me going. <laughs> so she was like your motivation, yes. inspiration. So yes. having that person is very important all the yeah. way through. A why? Like, what's your why to do this? Yes, yeah. which is one of your points. Yeah. Which is that? What? So she's gonna share her seven <laughs> things that she wished she knew before starting a business. So yes. I guess what would be your number one? Let's go there. The number one thing that I wish that I knew before starting a business was to be organized with your money, which I feel like once you start making money and it's coming in, you don't realize like you have to put it through taxes. You have to write down like all of these yeah, things. Um, and I think it happens to a lot of new business owners, especially if they don't have like a mentor or like a parent that's or somebody that's telling you like what to do. And my mom didn't tell me either. <laughs> Um, so when I was making money, I like wasn't putting it through my taxes. Now I have like this year, I'm finally going back and doing everything with my account. And my husband's like, I think we owe like a budget for like doing all these things. And I'm like, I wish I knew that. Um, I also wish I knew that I have to be confident when I'm doing things because I would do an event. And then this person was like, I'm going to pay you, but I'm going to pay you after. And I was like, okay, no problem. Cause I was just so scared. And then, You're also the sweetest yeah. person I know. Super <laughs> chill, so I can see that happen. Yeah, well, not anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, she didn't pay me after one of those events, oh and I we worked for free. So I wish I knew like that. I have to like just know, like step it up. If like someone's you know telling you they're not going to pay you or anything, like it has to be later to just tell them no. 
you know, like these types of things. So not being afraid to say no. Yeah, definitely not being there. afraid to say no. And then the third thing is I did a lot of collabs. I, I did a lot of things for free, which I think a lot of business owners do um, to get their names out there. And what I realized is a lot of influencers will just go from like event planner to event planner or like hairstylist to hairstylist or, you know, they're not going to use you again because they don't want to pay you ever, you know. So they're looking for freebie. Yeah, for freebie. So I wish I knew like not to give away so many like events to people because you know it was a lot of my money and time. Um, another thing that I wish I knew that probably hurt me as I was doing things is probably like your friends aren't gonna be always the first ones to support you. It's probably that's the hardest one. Yeah, it's a hard one. Um, it's you know, a stranger. You know, I had one of my really good friends at this crazy event for you know her her family. And she didn't hire me for it. And I was like sad inside, but I never said anything. And I, and then I got a bigger event than hers, but it was from a stranger. So I realized like sometimes it's not your friends that will support you. It'll be somebody else. Um, and that's okay. And that's, you know, the beauty that's, of it. But that, that's a yeah. really like yeah. good point because yeah. I think I, I've seen it so much online. Like anytime that you start a new business, yeah, that's, that's what they say. Like your friends will support you when yeah. They feel that you're just the same person they knew. Yeah. But as soon as you start to grow or make moves, yeah, it kind of like they yeah. they can't like understand it or register it, so yeah. they won't know what to do with it. So they right. don't support it. They're just like, oh, that's cool, and like, yeah, not repost you, share you, yeah. like, and it's hard. Yeah, it is hard. It's a hard pill to swallow, but with time, you also make new connections. Um, I also wish I wasn't like as you know shy in the beginning because I was I wouldn't network as much as I do now um and I think networking is one of the biggest things you have to do as an event designer you have to go out there and be clients be bold um so I definitely think that that's something that is really really important to just get out there do you have a mantra of how you like prep yourself to get out there like do you like you have a little speech you do a little <laughs> dance like how do you get yourself pumped to go out, actually, I'm like, I tell my husband, I'm like, help me talk to these people. No, I'm kidding. Um, now I feel like I, I'm just like in a different era of my life, like where I'm like able to speak like before even doing this podcast, like speaking in front of anybody was just so terrifying for me. And I would just get so nervous that now I feel like I've done it so much that I'm able to do it. But in the beginning, I would just be like, hi like I have an event company like what and a lot of times like they know you're nervous which that kind of ruins it for you but the more and more you do it and the more it will be the more confident that you get and that will be like when you know people like now I'm like completely fine to just like answering anybody's question you know yeah so the more you do it the better so what what was the nervousness from like yeah where did what, where was that stemming from like explain because I think so many people resonate with that because I always say this like we're all nervous yeah. because we're all a hot mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. Everyone's a hot mess, yeah. but like, like how do you rise to the occasion? And what's your mantra to go for? Like, is it an alter ego? Like Beyonce does it all the years. <laughs> is it like a, like a little quote? Like what yeah. do you do yourself to hype yourself up to get to these networking events? I think now my, like my mantra now is like, the worst thing that can happen is a no, and then I'll go on to a next person. So the worst <laughs> thing that can happen is a no, and that's it. Um, before my mantra was like, I think it was like a fear of imposter where I was like, I'm just selling picnics. What am I really talking to about these corporate people, you know, but in my head, I think I've always been this person where I'm like, I have this big vision for myself. So I would talk about these picnics and people would ask me like, Oh, but can you do this? And I was like, yeah, that's super easy. Like I could do that, but I didn't know how to do it. Um, oh, so I, I would like, so you were just confident. Yeah. When, especially when you're yeah. speaking to them mm -hmm. and then you're just like, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to YouTube it. I'm going to Google. I'm going to ask. But it was, it was like, you know, it's starting a business or doing anything is just, it's hard. Like it's not an easy route and it's something that you're like, you know, what guts do I have to do this? But then once you do commit to it, it's like, this is my baby. Like you have to go out there and put yourself out there or else you no, know, you, your fear is going to get in your way of being successful. So I remind myself that all the time. Like if I'm nervous or I stay, stay home or me not even coming here, it's like, you know, I could have been like, I'm too nervous or like, you know, but I have to put myself out there every single time because my business depends on it as well, you know? And I love that. Yeah. Like, I'm so happy she's here because you have so much to share. Yeah, like, well, thank you. This is like a crazy moment for me. I don't yeah. think you can, because I just remember seeing you years ago. No, 
I was like, I've seen you wake up. Oh. I'm like, whatever your kids grow up. Like, oh. I know. It's crazy. But we look the same. So. I know. I know. Yeah. It's like, it's just because, yeah. like, again, it's just yeah. seeing your growth process yeah. and how, like, you've always had an eye for detail. Like, you, you guys will see in a bit with her photos and stuff, but... Again, to me, it's just, like, I can tell. Like, Absolutely. I just remember when I saw your page, and it's just, like, you brand it. Like, a, you know, you have the fashion design component mm -hmm. with the merchandise and marketing, and it just brings it full circle. Mm -hmm. um, so it definitely is one of those things that, like, I, I applaud you. And make sure you comment down below when you go check out her page and heart emojis in the comment section. <laughs> so I wanted to let you all know about our sponsors at Event Decor Direct. They're your one-stop shop for all the event decor supplies. Whether you're someone looking for fabric, hardware, or even custom dance floor wraps, they are a go-to stop. You can use the special code UNCUT11 to get 11% off a purchase. So make sure to check them out. They are my go-to when it comes to designing. Um, but what is your next thing that you wish you would have known when you started your business? I think the next thing that I would have known, I feel like I would have started earlier if I realized that you don't have to have this huge capital to start a business. I think a lot of people always think like, I can't start a business because I need to have all this money without real, or they, everyone wants to start. Like I have one of my friends that she's like, I want to start because I need to figure out my name or I need to figure out this. And it's like, you don't realize that if you just start, you could just go for it. And you know, you don't have to have the perfect name. You don't have to have the capital. You can start with one client, that one client can fund your next event. You know, you can start very small, which is what I did. And I wish I would have taken the, like, everyone always is like, I wish I started sooner. Maybe I wasn't ready for it. But I wish I didn't have that, like, fear of, like, you know, I, I need more money or I need to do more things. And funny enough, I almost gave away half of my business. I started my business with $5,000. Yeah. And I offered one of my has my friend's wife's. I'm like, hey, if you split this, you know, with me, $2,500, $2,500, I'll give you 50% of my company. And she was like, okay, yeah. She was like, let me think about it. And then she's like, I don't think I want to spend that much money in $2,500. And I was like, okay. So my husband was like, are you crazy? Like, you're about to give 50% of your idea for $2,000. Like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I kind of want to do it with somebody. Like, I'm nervous. Like, and he was like, you can do this on your own. Like, here's a $2,000. And he's like, just do it. And it's not like, it wasn't even about the money. It was just like, I really wanted to have like something. That's a point. Yeah. That's a point system. I wish I wasn't think I didn't think that of myself. I wish I would have just been like, I could do this with $3,000, you know, and maybe as a little, it was a hobby in the beginning. It paid me as a hobby, but then when it was full time, now it pays me as a full time, you know? Yeah. But you mentioned two great points, which I have to highlight. It's the fact that, one, you caught yourself in questioning your own confidence mm -hmm. in design, right? Yeah. You're like, can I do this? I want to do this. But also, like, maybe having the support. Because, obviously, like, a thousand percent having a partner through yeah. the situation it makes it easier. But you did have one along yeah. with your husband. Yes. He was there like, what are you doing? Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. You could do this. And yeah. he was like your biggest cheerleader and supporter. So yeah. having the support team is very important. And for you, like, what was like one of the milestones, especially when you were in that process of like, oh my God, like he's right. Like, how did you click it though? You're like, okay, maybe he's not just <laughs> saying anything because he's my husband. He loves me, but yeah. he, he's right. Like I can't. I did this launch party for all these influencers and that's where I spent the five thousand dollars and I'm like I wanted to invite everybody like I want to have like this really cool party and everybody post about it and then from there I want to see like what reaction I get from it like maybe the thousand dollars go to nothing like nobody ever contacts me so it was after that party that I realized I was like okay I could do this because everyone was like this is insane like my mom was cutting flowers we were driving U-Hauls back and forth picking up furniture like I made this deal with this restaurant like it, it was just it was insane like I, I didn't even do my makeup I was like sweating like I came like running like you were in that designer like mentality 100% <laughs> and my stepdad was even driving a U-Haul like it was just crazy but I realized right then and there that I could do this um but I will say like sometimes I think that people will say like they won't start a business which I hear it a lot with, because they're like I don't have a partner or I don't have somebody to help me yeah. but truthfully like I only have my mom and my husband which is still two people but you but know it's a small yeah it's a small, a small it's two people it's two yeah. people but like you don't need you know like you don't need to have this huge family or like you know your husband or your boyfriend or someone to support you like if you really want it like you can just do it on your own you know you don't need somebody 
I'm doing that. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. You don't say it louder for the people in the back. You need to start your business. <laughs> like, if, if it's something that you're really passionate about and that you love, like, why do you need someone to, like, verify that for you or, like, validate that for you, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I, like, I'm like, should I close out? We have, we have two more points you just want to share. Yes. So, what was the next thing? So, okay, so you're at the point where you're like, okay, I'm starting the business. Great. And... Mm-hmm. So then from there, you're like, how, like from doing picnics, how did you know you wanted to expand? Like, yeah. I know people were requesting it, but yeah. how did you feel like that? Okay, I can do this. Like, or you know what? All in. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was all in. Like I had the picnics, but I was like, oh, I cannot wait. I started like following like, like massive event planners. I'm like, I cannot wait until that's me, you know? Yeah. And a lot of things that I started doing as well on my Instagram at the time was I was posting inspo where I would do like an inspo of this or an inspo of that. And people were like, oh, can you do that? And I was like, yeah, I can. And I would be able to do it. Sometimes it would be better, you know, and sometimes they would like love it and hire us again. But I think that, you know, that's where I landed. And like, I was like, I really need to, I wanted to grow this bigger, you know, and I also wasn't afraid to hire people. You know, I wasn't the person that wanted to keep all the money for myself. You were greedy, no, which is a big thing. You know, if I didn't hire somebody, I wouldn't have grown so quickly. Like I hired somebody right away so we could split, do different events and her answer Instagram inquiries, I'm doing the event or, or vice versa, you know? Um, so I think that was like a big point. So you were big on collaboration and yeah. then also, so in the same token with that, early on you became a boss, a yeah. leader, because I always say this, a manager or, you know, some bosses, they just dictate what they want but what do leaders do they inspire they motivate and they see talent and skill set and they will rise you up to that and like yeah boast you right like give you that push so that's amazing that you did that I applaud you especially (laughs) early on like that's great so with your team so then you got your team Mm -hmm. so then what was the next point from that so then I got my team and then I had one of my I had I hired this girl which I think in life everything is about being like a good person and like networking I've done events for my friends that I haven't talked to since sixth grade and I've done their like bridal showers now so I think it's always like being like this good person that people see that you're doing an event and they're like they like your work and like I could rehire this girl you know um but I had this girl that I hired to do my closet like to help me like just fix it and I would always shout her out organize Mm -hmm. everything I shouted her out and I didn't know that she was um, the executive assistant for Southern Wine, um, uh, like, you know, the liquor company. Yeah. So then she hired me and she's like, I want you to do our corporate event. It's $20,000. My idea was doing $300 events. So I was like, $20,000? You're like, what? Yeah. 300 dollars She's like, I want you to do the, the our corporate event. So I was like, okay, I can do that. And I did her corporate event. We've done it a couple of times after that. But that was like a pivot point where I was like, oh my God, I am doing a corporate event for all these employees here in like their corporate office. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that was like in our first year. So it was like a really big, big moment. How did you feel like, in that, tell me like, walk me through that moment. Like walk us all through that moment. Like you're like, okay, I'm doing like $300, $500 events. Yeah. To now 20000 yeah. and above and like the doors yeah. are opening. You're like, what was your yeah. mindset at that time? It was honestly, if you're in a bad pattern and you're starting, you will probably relate to this at one point. I did, I mean, I don't think she realized because she was so nice and everything came out good, but I, it was like a Thanksgiving event and I I bought hay on Amazon, but I bought like, um, hay, like that's like a picture of hay, not actual hay. But oh, she was like a 3D, like. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know so I showed up with like papers of haze and when we opened everything which is like things that you learn as you go usually you're supposed to check everything the day before I just brought the boxes and it wasn't hay it was just like pictures of hay and I was like oh my god and she's like where's the hay and I'm like oh I'm like we're gonna just use this and she was like okay like okay yeah. I, I guess like, I trust your mess. Mess. Yeah. so then we did all these different things but it was just these moments where I was like pinch me I can't believe this is real but pinch me I'm also so not ready for this but I don't know what I'm doing and I, I, I was just like so scared, but it was like our first event that I was like, wow, like you know? I love that you share yeah. that though because that yeah. happens like all the time. We like especially in the beginning, you're like yeah. or something, you're like, yeah. oh my god, that's Sizes, not what I expected. Yeah. Sizes, measurements. Yeah. Tell people how important yeah. it is to measure to like so logistics. Important. So important. It is. I just didn't enough. Just it. I did an event. 
Um, and we hired like this big backdrop and it wouldn't fit in the door because we didn't do the measurements. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, like it's these little things that you don't even think of, you know, as you're starting. Um, but it's, it's really important. Like everything, like if you want to be successful, everything is into like detail, 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 you know, because events are detailed and there's somebody's mm-hmm. most important day, you know, it's like your first baby shower, your first, your only wedding. Um, your big corporate event, you know, like that's the one you're planning. So it's like so important to every single person. Yeah. Like I always yeah. say, like any event you take on, yeah, it is the equivalent to America with Super Bowl. Yes. You know how for a war Super Bowl, everything stops. Yeah. You go to a store, yeah. every cake is a football and yeah. everything. Yeah. That's how everyone's yeah. wedding day or baby show, whatever it is. It's about them. It's their day. It's yeah. my day. And that's it. Yeah. So. We're going to actually go through some of your photos <laughs> and I want you to tell me a little bit about your process and kind of like what were some of the successes and what were some of the challenges. Yeah. So, um, we have gone here and chosen already some photos which you guys will see on the screen as well. Okay. So this event actually was for David Grubman, which I don't know who you, if you know yes, who he is. Absolutely. Um, he's like, he's opened Gecko. Yeah. He opened Gecko. He's. A restaurant, like, by the way, in Miami. Yeah. Go check it out. Bad Bunny. Bunny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bad Bunny. Liv, Komodo, Swan. He's like, the, his best friends are like Victoria Beckham and David Beckham. They're huge. Um, That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> they hired us to do their daughter's birthday. And after I left, it was crazy because I've done bigger events than this, but it was the magnitude of working with them. Like Camila Coelho was there, you know, it, it's a, he was a, he just like the biggest client I've ever had. Yeah. Like it's all the celebrity clientele, yeah. all the friends. And that's also a lot of pressure because yeah. you're like, yeah. Oh my God. If I design, I have to make sure it's like yeah. an experience for all his guests that are yes. celebrities, yes. A-list celebrities. Um, but I cried after this event because I was just so emotional that I couldn't believe that I've gotten to like this client, you know, I've worked at his venues before, but never with him. Um, and I did his daughter's his daughter's um, birthday, and now we're doing all the Halloween events for um, Strawberry Moon, which is a hotel, um, the Heat yeah. Club, and Swan, like all these big places in Miami. So it was like a it, it has been a turning point for us to work with him. So this, it's one of their moments. this is amazing. You guys hear this? So she started from doing picnic events yes. to now she's booking booked and busy. Yes, <laughs> to have David Roman as yeah. one of your like are you, like Google him and you guys will see what I'm yes. talking about. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, we went all out with this event and something that I like to do with all my clients, not just because it's David Grumman and Isabella Grumman, it's because I want to put my name out there. Like, you know, when we were doing the flowers or I'm doing balloons, like I always add something gifted from my end that I think a little extra. Yeah. That will enhance the event. Yeah. Because it makes it look prettier. People will ask, you know, like who did this event? If you just add something like we gifted, like, you know, flowers for the cake stand or stuff like that, but it just looks nicer. And People will ask, it's our name behind it. So I always gift a little couple things to my clients as well. So that's a good actually point. I think everyone would be interested mm-hmm. in knowing it's like, yeah. what, do you give yourself a price range of how much you're going to gift to the client? No. But or it I, depends? No, I feel like I'm just, I, I, ha- I have this problem with like my mom that we're like this most generous people ever that I'm like, oh, gift her this and gift that and gift this. I've gifted so many things, like every event, they're like, Kathy, are you making money? I'm like, yes, I am. But I also, I think of it like my event. I'm like, they can't afford the vinyl for the floor. I'll pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but it'll look nicer. Oh, so. I, I love that yeah. though. Like you go above and beyond yes. for the client, which leaves such a memorable mark yes. of who you are to them. Yeah. And then they hire I, I, forever. Like what I tell my, my team is it's not one client, you know, a client is a forever client. A client has a wedding when they have a kid and they have a baby shower and they have the husband's birthday, the mother's birthday. Like it's a forever client. Once I lose one client, I lost a forever client. So I never want to lose them. I want to keep them coming. So it's a small investment in the beginning that leads to like a bigger return in the future. And that's why I know you're going to be extremely <laughs> successful all the way through because that's what it takes. Like, yeah. You're not just a one hit wonder. Mm-hmm. You're constantly building a relationship yeah. with a client that builds trust mm-hmm. and that like bond where yeah. you're like they went above and beyond for me because they yeah. see these things they'll remember yeah. like that wasn't yeah. part of my design oh my gosh she did yeah. it for me so it makes a difference yeah so your next photo there you go so this is a rehearsal dinner the wedding's actually the one outside which i think you have some pictures of it was my first two hundred thousand dollar wedding um, Ooh, $10,000. <laughs> yes. um, it was on my client, which I love her so much. We just did another event for her. 
she's this, it was her second marriage, and she's this person that has, you know, she's very well off, and she's like, I want to get married on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. New Year's Eve, um, that was my New Year's Eve, and I want to get married on New Year's Day at 11 in the morning. So you were just like, what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, no problem. So I worked from like the 29th until the first, um, just like non like I didn't sleep. Like I did, I went to sleep on the 31st, like early so I could be up by three to set this event up. It was probably the most challenging event I've ever had because I took on everything. I took on being, helping the catering. I took Plan- on, so you took on planner and designer planner designer and she didn't know anything like I did her photography she didn't hire one person like she was like here's my wedding here's 200 grand you do what you want you run with everything and I was like stressful and amazing at the same time yeah it was stressful and she was this lady that had really good taste um she loved flowers she's this you know older lady very classy um we did it on a private beach that her house is in front of we didn't even need like a permit or anything but that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, it was one of the times that I also realized that when you're reaching out to vendors, like, obviously, we worked on the first, you know, first yeah. people are hungover. My bartenders were, like, slacking, like, the people at the catering company brought, um, the people that, you, not, not the catering, like, who we hired to do the catering part. Yeah. Um, it's the, hard to find staff yeah. that works on those special holidays because yeah. everyone wants to be with their yeah. family. No, it's hard to find staff, I think, nowadays that actually want to work. No, they were like key lazy. Thing. Yeah, they were like like slumping their feet. Like they weren't like, you know, like let's go, like let's make this. It's very hard to find people that like love what, what they do. Yeah, that love what they do. I have now I have them thankfully, which has been a challenge, you know, to find. Um, but I, as the wedding planner, I took off my shoes. It was like a beach wedding. Yeah. I took off my shoes and I was serving. Like I was serving. I was like, I put my hair up and I was. That's like, what I call hustle. Yeah. I was like Just... running. My dress is all black and my, my client saw it, you know, and I walked into everybody's table. I'm like, how are you guys doing? Does anybody need water? Does anybody need anything? And that wasn't like, I'm very big on like, that's not my job. Like everything is my job. Like an event is my job. Like, I don't care if I'm not like the bartender, I will get behind the bar. Like, I'm not overqualified for anything, you know? So, you guys see, yeah. say it again. I'm not overqualified for, for anything. That is, either. I think, a yeah. quote I'm going to have to quote <laughs> yeah. on. Yes. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was a big training point. So, after this, we've gotten, you know, we have, like, now a $375,000 wedding that we're doing. So, it was a big learning point for me. But also, it pushed me and my team, like, on how hard they went. Because my team, that was also not, like, bartenders. We were, like, we had, like, these custom coconuts. They were breaking the coconuts. Like, everybody was all in. But I hired this girl that she was asking. And she was new. And she was asking my team, like, and so what time is she paying us? Like, what what are we doing? Like, oh, she was like. One like, of those. But my team is so good to me. They told me. They were like, she's like venom for the team. You know, she's not a good person for the team. Well, they told you. Yeah, they told me. They're, because I treat my team really well. Like, yeah. after this, like, I, you know, we took them to lunch. We you know, she was just like a staff. No, they're friends. my family. Yeah. No, they're my, they're, without them, I wouldn't have my company like I love my team like like they're like an extension extended family to me um but it also made me realize like you need to find the right people to work with and you need to treat them really right like you need to be good to them because you're only as good as a staff you have you know because whenever you have an event um you need to have these people that care about your company like you do or if not like it's not, I don't care how good you are, you need to have five good people with you, you know, yeah. to have these larger it takes. Events. It takes a village, it takes a team to execute. It's never, yeah. that's yeah. why yeah. you brought up a, a, a key thing. Mm-hmm. Always, we always have a lot of people um, that say, can I do this on my own? And the number one thing they always say is like, no, you need yeah. to find a team, a team that will literally gravitate towards you mm-hmm. because it all depends on what type of yeah. like boss you are. Yes, 100%. Like bonuses, like after we finish this, I gave my girls, like, all the bonuses. I did not keep all the money for myself. Like, I sent um, my main event planner at the time. Her, she had never been to Disney with her husband and her kids. I sent them to Disney. That's like, I was like, you know, I want to do that. And, like, and that's, like, what, what I love being an entrepreneur is being able to give jobs as well, you know. So it was a big moment for us here. It's amazing. <laughs> I love yes. that. So next slide. Okay, let's see the next This one. is good stuff, you guys. You guys are getting all the exclusive <laughs> from Kat. This is a bridal shower. Um, I think it was like one of the first ones that we had where we did all the customizations. So at first, I used to outsource doing flowers. I used to outsource doing backdrops. I used to outsource a lot of different things. 
And I realized that I could take the courses to become a florist. I realized that I could pay my team to take the florist um, courses. And I realized that we can also make a couple of things on our own. So education was a big thing. You're like, education's huge. Like I believe in, I learned, I, I love education. Like it's how you get better. You know, you can't like just be like this person where you're not going to invest in yourself. Like you have, to, I invest in myself and my team. Yeah. Like I take, I send them to floor, floor, flower courses um, I send them to all these different things for them to learn. So it was like our first one where it's like cute, but it's not as good as what we do now. But it was like our moment where I, I used to pay a florist like this money. And I'm like, I could earn that myself. And not only me, but like my team as well, you know? Um, so it was one of those moments for us. Okay, I'll switch. Um, these are the picnics. So we used to start obviously in picnics. Um, and although they became like, you know, we used to make up like good yes, money with it. Super popular. Super popular. Like this picnic was like, this um, client here paid us ten thousand dollars not for just this picnic. We did a couple of other things like we had Minnie Mouse come, like all these different things. But I just realized that it also just wasn't what I wanted to do. Like it's not my style, and I think as an event designer, you need to realize like what is it your that signature you... style. Yeah, so I try to stay away from the. I mean, I'll still do them. I have girls on my team that like to do them, so they'll do them. But I like love other things. So we just pivoted away from this a little bit, but you know, there, it's but not- it's You always not remember as a starting point. Yeah, we remember it as a starting point. This was an event for Colgate. Um, you know, uh, we've done a lot of uh, beach events, um, which have been my largest clients. We did, uh, I don't think I have the picture here, but we did this $500,000 event on the beach with drones or like all these things. And it was just this crazy event that also was a pinch me moment. Um, that we're doing with and now we build a relationship with this client of doing they own like the um, the beach I guess they're the Boucher brothers oh they, okay. so they yeah so that's my they client. Even have a rental system in the beach yeah so this event was for Colgate and you know they did the chairs and stuff we did a bunch of activations that I probably can send you the right picture but um it was also a big moment for us where we were doing corporate events like forty thousand dollar events like every yeah other you week. got a big company Colgate yeah like, yeah huge yeah so it was a big moment for us when we started getting a lot of corporate clients this was our starting point which were the picnics um, actually this event was free. That we did for an influencer and you know and it was like to get your name out there it was to get my name out there was it worth it i don't know but yeah we used to do these all the time <laughs> i think it was yeah after it you was. Like, booked and busy yeah. A thousand percent. <laughs> yeah um this one was one of the uh, one of the things that i was mentioning to you so this event was at the one hotel which i really hope the bride never listens to this um but she asked me if i could do the ceiling with the greenery and hanging glasses and flowers to do like whole like truss installation yeah, yeah and I was like yes I could do that and she was like okay perfect and then I, I left and I was like I do not know how to do that and then I was like where do I how do I learn how to do this so I spoke to this florist that I I love um and she was like you need to do this and then you need to like work with these girls like and so she brought all these people for me and my team as well we were like hanging upside from the roof we were like like holding all these things but we pulled it off. We did it. Yeah. But we were there for like eight hours doing this. Trying to figure yeah. it out yeah. and everything. But it was a big moment for us where I was like, you know, I love to bring on challenges. If you're asking, like, can you do this? Like, I say yes, but then I will ask experts on how to do it. And then I will make it happen. <laughs> and it's also a process of you growing outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah. you're basically pushing yourself outside your boundaries that you're comfortable in. That's yeah. where you grow the most. Yes. Yeah. And funny enough, I actually quoted this with the florist I used to work with, and I quoted, and also important is to know how to charge, because that's one of the things I wish I knew. I was like, I could do this for like two grand, you know? Yeah. The guy was charging me 15000 and I was like, that's probably like maybe cost $10,000, and I'm charging two k for six hours, like 20 people working. So how did, now that you said that, like how did she learn how to charge? Um, I Especially went, Miami. She's yeah. in a great area. <laughs> yeah. I went to a class, actually. I took a course that taught me how to charge, which is like a business part. Mm -hmm. um, and also sneakingly, um, I've asked other people what it costs, and I'm like learning a little bit more about it. But Very I, sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like learning. But I also don't like to overcharge because I don't like to make people feel like... Ripped off. Ripped off. I will charge for my team and my creativity before I didn't charge as much, but... Um, I, I did learn, you know, how to charge. And also, I think you learn a lot from your vendors because when you're yeah. doing your florals and stuff, you're like, yeah. oh, like, that's how much they cost because yeah. it all depends on what in season, right? Yeah, so for sure. 
Let's see. This is me taking a floral course with my team. We took a two-day floral course to learn how to do installations and all these different things. So it was a nice moment, not only for myself, but I have a larger team than this, but these are two of the people that work yeah, with me full time. The um, they like the flowers. Um, so it was a good, it was a great moment, but not only for myself, but for them to like see that I'm investing in them, that I don't want just to take myself and like them be my assistants. I kind of like, like them to have their own creativity. But see, that's the main thing. So to any of you that own a company, you need to invest in your staff and yes. educate them and inspire them to new heights so yeah. that way they're able to even provide better results for your company. Cause that's what, now that you did that, like, yeah. They're now going to be able to execute these designs without you having to like hold their hand through the process. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think not enough people, even in corporate world or in different places, like they don't take advantage of it. Like at Zimmerman, people would offer, like the company offered us, like Toastmasters, all these different things, and I would go, and it was out of five hundred people, ten, which me included, you know. Yeah. So I feel like not enough people. Take like advantage. take advantage of learning, and there's so many things that you can learn online as well. Or coming to like if I was. I didn't even know that there's like a school. To, I would have definitely done it, you know, because yeah. it's something that you actually like take away with you and you learn. And these are things that you like, it'll save you money learning it, you know? Yeah. If, if I, ended up, if I ended up paying more for not learning, you know, I would pay this other person to do my stuff. So I think that you can invest in yourself and you'll make that return right away. That's a very key thing. <laughs> um, this is one of our clients, actually, with Alex Earl, which was, like, a really big influencer. I think a lot of people may yeah. know her. If you haven't, <laughs> you can check her out. But, yeah, very popular influencer. Yeah, we just worked with them right now. I just launched in New York and L.A., um, our company. So I just came back from New York and because we just did their event with another celebrity in New York. Um, and it was pretty cool. I actually didn't know who she was before the event. And my client was like, how do you not know who she is? And I was like, I'm not on TikTok. I, I mean, I have. You're about your business yeah, now. Like, I just focus. Yeah. You have laser, like, yeah. vision. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't even know who this other celebrity client was. That like, you don't know anybody. And I'm like, I do, but I, I'm also 33. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, This is an award show. That was a really big event for us. It's probably this the largest. This is huge. Event. I saw yeah. this and I wanted you to explain yeah. a little more. Um. So this was the largest event that we've done so far. I actually got this client, which is really important for event planners to know. It's everything is word of mouth. So my $200,000 event was from this client named Susie um, from Fort Lauderdale. I did her 50th birthday and she has recommended me to so many people because I did such a good job. So she recommended me to the $200,000 event and then she recommended me to this event that was huge. And as a return, I just did her son's birthday. She would never expected it. I just paid for her entire son's birthday. I went all out as a thank you to her because, you know, referrals are really important. Taking care of her clients mm -hmm. is really important. She has the money. She didn't care for that, you know, but it was just like a small thank the you. The thought. Mm -hmm. But this event we did, and we had to start setting up from 3 in the morning. We had to do everything. I hired the staff, the models. We designed the stage. Um, it was three different rooms that we had to design. Um, it was a Nicole Miller, um, the CEO of Olaplex, um, Lelipons, like a bunch of different people. And now we're working the event again, which is what I tell my staff all the time. I'm like, my team, um, like, it's important that we treat every event so, like, greatly because it's they, they're going like, to have it again. Like, it's your one event that you yeah. have. Yeah. The only one. Yeah. The only important one that you have at the moment. Yeah. Mind you, we were doing this event, and then we were figuring out, like, two days later, like, how to do, like, the ceiling <laughs> with the other event. I'm like, we're running around. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been great. Like my client just texted me and she's like, we're going to do this event again in April, like, you know, mark the date. So it was a really love your services and yeah. I have to refer for the next one. I think, oh, this is a, um, engagement party. I think it's just to show, highlight, like how we've grown to even like do structures or florals because I didn't do any of this. Like my team did all this by themselves. So like basically you started with what, like you started with like a focused service at the beginning and then yeah. you've grown and expanded because that's the main thing as a business owner. You have to remember that there's always room for growth and, mm -hmm. and progress through your process. Like, yes. But like you said, taking classes, doing all this, it really makes a difference. 100%. Um, this was an event for Pretty Little Thing, which has been our client for three years. It's also, amazing. Yes. I love this client. <laughs> it's my like favorite client, I think, like that has like believed in me from the beginning. 
Um, we did a design for Naomi Campbell, and we ran it across in New oh, York. Oh, we did a collection together. Yeah, we did the New York event, um, like a, a smaller event. We did the big LA event and the big Miami event. So we've just been able to build that relationship, not mess it up, like, you know, which it tells a lot about you. We have this event, like an event with them, like every month, you know, so. That's amazing, because they do really pop shops all the time, yeah, right? they do influencer events. This is for the same brands, Aminoline in New York, which now we're launching. Um, a wedding that we did and I'm like very I come up with these ideas in my head and I'm like we should do this so I pitched my client that we should do these lights on top of her wedding and I had my team which obviously we're not we don't know how to do this so as we're doing the events <laughs> all the lights are falling on each other we're like and then like, my team was like well, I don't think this is going to happen and I was like no but it has to happen and all the lights are falling on each other. Like they, it wouldn't, it wouldn't like. You basically were trying to do like the cafe lights all yeah. over the table. And I couldn't do it. And obviously, we were able to pull it off. I had to go. It's all the trial and error. Yeah. Like I got this. Yeah. And then I, I bet you, like, we're with your team. Like you guys, we got this. Like let's. Yeah. At one point, we were like all holding like poles, and we were like, "This is this isn't happening." Like it's just because everything was just falling on us, and like the lights were getting tangled. <laughs> uh, but it's this person's wedding. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, oh my god, like we need to make this happen. But the crazy thing is, we, what things that you don't realize is like we had to have so many plugs for all the lights to be turned on. So I had to run to Home Depot like five times, like things that you don't even know, trial and error, which is why it's really important to set up with time. Um, <laughs> but we, we, we pulled it off. She was super happy and don't recommend, I don't recommend doing it. Don't ever do it, but it's a challenge. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is the wedding, the two hundred thousand dollar wedding. We did the ceremony, we did the dinner party, we did the rehearsal dinner. And they, you didn't even need a permit because they no, own they the own the beach, yeah. yeah. And we did all these flowers in house. We were working for days. That, I was gonna say like that's yeah. hours on top of hours, hours of work. Because this is just little. Like her whole wedding was like cascades. how long was the the aisle runner? Um, she had like two hundred people. So oh yeah, it was a big wedding. Um, it was a lot, but. Yeah, because you, you framed the whole thing. It looks like a big bush of roses. And yeah. It's beautiful. It Thank you. Um, this is, I think this is like a moment where I feel, oh, this was a, my friend did a $30,000 wedding. I mean, a uh, bridal shower. But it's my friend from sixth grade that I hadn't spoken to her in so long. And she was like, hey, like, I want you to do. And it's happened to me with a lot of my high school or college friends. And it makes me feel like good that they're like thinking of me for these things. Um. She hits me up for, like, her sister's um, bridal shower for, like, another party that she's doing um, upcoming now. Um, and it was really cool. It's really cool to have, like, people, like, now supporting you, which in the beginning maybe it's not like that, but it will happen in the future. Absolutely. Um, I think that's it. Amazing. So what would you tell someone who is trying to start in this business, like, when you first started, like, the whole process of growth, like, yeah. like you said, you started with $5,000 investment, yeah. to now you're booking all these amazing weddings. What would you tell someone who's in the rough moment of, like, you know, the trenches, like, yeah. where you're like, can I do this? You know, that yeah. pivotal moment. I think that I would tell them that if they wholeheartedly believe that they can do it and that this is something that they're really passionate about, that they have to go for it. I think that one of the things that has made us really successful is that I am obsessed with my business. Like, if this is something that you think about in the day, at night, and you just keep thinking, like, should I do it? Like, you have to do it. Like, you're wasting more time on not doing it. Um, I would also say, like, you don't have to start so big. It could be something so small. And as your friend's birthday or, like, something, you know, you don't have to go all, all, all out in the beginning. Um, you don't have to have the perfect name, the perfect website. Like, I started off with, like, this small website, the, not the name that I'm using now, but it's grown, you know? And I would definitely say that, you know, treat each event like the same. Just because a $200,000 event is, you know, my client, I'm not going to treat the $5,000 event like any, any, any less or $100. You know, if you're going to put your name behind it, like just make sure because at the end of the day, it's like they're hiring you, they're putting their, you know, their time into you, their, their money. So, it's really important that you, you know, treat it like a very important event to you, to yourself. Um, and yeah, I would just say, it sounds very cheesy, everybody says it all the time, but literally just go for it. Um, invest in yourself, invest in other people, surround yourself with other people and like block out like anybody that's being negative. Um, I remember I asked my husband, I'm like, can you come pick this up with me? Like I have to go pick this up. And he was like, I have a full-time job, like I can't do it. Yeah. And I was like, 
I don't have anybody. Like, who's in it? Come with me. I went at night, like at 11 o'clock. I went on LinkedIn and I started looking for transportation companies. This guy popped up. He looks, bless his soul. He looks so sketchy. I was like, I'm like, send me your, your license. He sent me his license. He was like, he looked sketchy. And I'm like, I'm in, I met up with him by myself. And, and now he's been my transportation person for three years. Oh my God. I love him, you know? And I was like, these little things that I'm like, I'm not just because my husband. Y'all take a chance. Yeah. I'm like, just because my, I mean, I, I drove a little bit far and I like wanted to see him, but just because somebody tells you no, doesn't mean like you have to be like, okay, well they said no. Like, I don't know what to do. It's like, you got to keep looking and keep going and keep going. That's how you'll get further. I would say. Amazing. So everyone, Kat, and tell everyone where they can go follow you on social media or your website. Yes. Um, in the cameras <laughs> and also to anyone that's hearing if you could just say the name of your website and stuff or yes. your Instagram so they can follow you okay so um, the name of our website is Cat Science Productions um, our Instagram is Cat Science Productions and mine is Cat Science so make sure you guys follow her make sure you guys like comment share this video also make sure you're listening on any of your favorite platforms and make sure that you part it when you are listening whether you're someone that's watching it now or driving in your car going home or going to work just make sure to let us know about this podcast episode how you liked it and thank you so much for listening thank you Kat so so course, much for being a guest on today's podcast episode like this is amazing <laughs> I, it's a pinch me moment for me for sure and thank you so much and thank you to all of you for watching and make sure to tune in for the next episode Bye. Bye.